I started, sir. Okay, Tanya is recording your call. Right. So, okay, guys, last thing. So, we explained about SAP FSC consultant roles and responsibilities. Okay, so this is a little bit very important for you to know exactly what SAP FIC or consultant will perform duties in real time in which areas uh, mainly. So these are all things we already discussed in last session. In the today's session, I'm going to discuss about uh, uh, system landscape real time. Uh, what are the uh, main? What are the main systems that we have in real time? And uh, so uh, what is non production servers and what is production servers? In which servers you need to work in time? OK, so I will explain uh, uh, one concept today that is very important for you, even for the interview perspective also. So far, what we have discussed is just like understanding about uh, uh, in real time uh, what you need to do, like uh, in which areas you need to. Uh, in which areas you need to perform your duties. So those things we already discussed and today's session I'm going to tell you. So what are the systems that we need to uh, have in real time, we need to perform our uh, uh, activities. OK, and uh, what is system landscape? OK, so this is very important session. Digital landscape. So, can you see my screen? Uh, is my voice is uh, audible? Anyone, please tell me. Yes, sir. Audible. You are, sir. you are clear, sir. Okay, right. See, uh, today's session is very important, guys, and uh, most of the interview questions will come from this area. If interviewer want to test whether you are real time consultant or uh, you are taking uh, training from somewhere and just attending the interview, so how we can differentiate? because of real time knowledge, right? So they will test out your uh, the real time knowledge. So what in which servers you have worked in real time and what is that servers? What are the servers? Uh, tell me. So this kind of question they will ask you. So uh, for your client, so what are the servers are there? Tell me production and non production servers. So today I'm going to discuss uh, these uh, important areas um, helpful uh, to get real time knowledge. OK. See, uh, see, landscape means it means list of servers. OK, landscape means list of servers. So in real time, you can see there are different kind of servers we have. OK, so what are that servers? Sandbox, Sandbox server. And the second one is so development server. And the third one is. IT server. And the fourth one is. Production. E production server. And fifth one should be production server. So these are all servers are very important in real time. So servers maintenance is cost effective for the companies. OK, so here I just listed out some of the servers like the sandbox server, development server, quality server, pre-production server and production server. So in most cases, so these are all servers will be there in the, for most of the companies. Some companies uh, uh, don't want to maintain all these servers. Then they will they will, then they will introduce only development and quality and production servers only. And uh, there will be no chance of sandbox and the pre-production. OK, it depends upon the uh, company. So whether they can able to afford the cost for all these servers or not. So here I just listed out only one, two, three, four, five servers. So apart from this, uh, there may be chances uh, to maintain other servers also. So relevant to uh, this uh, development server and quality server, they maintain other servers. So development UT, development quality will be there. OK, it depends. OK, you go to 
um, for any project. So uh, there will be chance of uh, looking uh, how many servers the companies are using, your client is using. Those things we can get in touch once you join into any company. But uh, for the training process, we will explain only um, these servers. So these are very crucial for uh, 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 every companies. So they need to maintain at least these servers, right? So sandbox server, development server, quality server, pre-production server, and the production servers. Okay, one, two, three, four, five servers are there. So uh, sandbox server generally use it for the trial and error purpose. Okay, so generally use it for trial and error purpose. So for example, if you don't, if you don't ever anything how to do in the system. Okay, so you don't know how to start, where to end up. Okay, you don't have proper uh, clarity on the configurations and all. So then which server should be preferred for sandbox server? It is, uh, that is the reason here I mentioned clearly trial and error purpose, okay. So if you do any configurations or if you post any transactions, there should not be any effect on these servers, okay. So sandbox server is used only for trial and error purpose. So it is just like dummy server. So if you post any kind of transactions and if you can make uh, configurations in this server, so system uh, uh, doesn't affect anything over here. There is no impact. So sandbox server generally uh, used for trial and error. And one more thing is, uh, so if uh, you are, uh, if, uh, let's say for example, you are the senior member, and uh, so one of the junior member has joined into your uh, uh, project. So if you want to try and, uh, him, then which server should be preferred generally? Sandbox server. For training purpose also, sandbox server should be preferred. Okay. And uh, development server, it is a very important server. So it is also called as a golden client. So golden client. Golden client means it, uh, um, the preference is uh, more on this server because uh, you know all the configurations will be done in the development server only. So all the configurations uh, will be carried out only in the development server. Okay. So that is the reason it is also called as a golden client. What is client and all I will explain in the next class. So for the time being today, I will explain what are the uh, production and non-production servers we have in real time. So at least you will get uh, some idea, okay? So all the configuration part will be done in the development server only, okay? So next is quality server. See quality means once you have done the configuration, then the next step would be uh, you need to perform unit testing. OK, so unit testing is very important uh, from SAP FSEO side. So without unit testing, uh, we cannot uh, move forward the changes to production level. So here, uh, once the configuration part is done, the next step would, should be you need to execute some test uh, scripts. You need to initially prepare, you need to prepare some test uh, scripts and after that you need to execute the same test scripts in the sap system in the quality server so in the so while executing the test scripts so if you're facing any kind of errors or uh, any kind of uh, uh, things that is unusually happening so those things you need to be record and take the screenshot and attach in the alm tool okay you need to give the test results in the alm tool okay so ALM tool is used for the testing uh, activities. Uh, generally in real time, there is a separate team will be there for the testing activities. Okay, uh, so testers will be there. So for example, if your client doesn't have a testing team, then uh, you, you SAP FIC or consultant alarm perform this activity. Okay, so quality server is very important. And here uh, you will have to perform different kind of testings like unit testing, integration testing, regression testing and all. So that is the reason. So all the testing activities from FICO side will be performed in the quality system only. And whatever the data in the production, uh, so the same will be uh, copied in the quality server. So then uh, uh, testing is possible. If in production, whatever the data is there, the same will be copied to quality server, then only the testing should be possible because uh, so this should be production copy is a quality server in most cases. Okay. So all the test scenarios will be there in the production system. The same will be copied in the quality server. So copying from production data to quality server, it's little bit cost effective. So this uh, will, um, for that point of view, last uh, in my previous company. So we used it to go to Mumbai for uh, um, uh, all the copying the data from production to uh, quality server. Okay. 
So anyhow, so in real time, all the testing activities will be done in the quality server only. So here, uh, so you need to execute different kind of uh, test scripts. Uh, and finally, what is that output? The same should be uh, analyzed and uh, that the same should be need to attach in the ALM tool. The ALM tool means it's a, take a, it's a testing tool. So here all the test scripts results that we need to attach in the ALM tool only. So ALM is a, uh, ALM stands for application lifecycle management. OK, it is uh, one of the best tool for testing activities. Um, generally, there are two types of testings that uh, we have in real time. So one is uh, manual testing and second one is automatic uh, uh, automation testing. So manual testing will be performed by FSEO consultant for automation and all uh, there is uh, different kind of uh, testing tools will be there selenium okay and uh, uh, qt hvqtc and so many other testing tools will be there so um, some of the testers will be recruited by your consulting companies sorry your uh, consulting companies and uh, for the client uh, uh, the testing activities so they will perform uh, automation testing if automation testing is not there only manual testing is going on you are completely sole responsible for doing this activity okay so quality server generally used for entire testing activities and the development server is also called as a golden client. All the configurations will be done in the only development server. OK, so pre-production, you know, so user need to give the acceptance or whatever the configurations you have performed that is working or not, who will decide? So user, user will give you the um, uh, result. OK, so from your side, the uh, configuration is OK and uh, you uh, said that entire testing activities I performed everything is fine but uh, finally who will perform uh, all the activities in the production system so only end users the end users make the financial statements he know how to post the entries and what are the scenarios are there he will know clearly so that is the reason so um, uh, from your side is okay SAP FSEO consultant every time says okay but uh, who will decide whether it is working fine or not um, so end users will decide. So for that point of view, here end user performance one test. End user will perform on uh, one test. That test is called as the UAT. UAT means user acceptance test. Acceptance test. So here all the testing activities uh, uh, will be done by UA, uh, users only. So here the users uh, have this access. Pre-production access only leads have this access, not entire users. So in end user side only uh, leads will get this access. OK, and it depends upon the um, your client. So which uh, 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 whom to need to give that access and all. So here production server, it is a main server and these are all servers are completely back end servers in IT. OK, so mainly you will work uh, mainly end users will work on this uh, production server only. So production server end user has access um, to edit the document to post the document okay edit the document so post the document and uh, extract the reports display the report, reports so all the access will be given to uh, end user for the production uh, system only you don't have any access in the production system so sap fsco or hana fana consultant do not have any access in the production system to post the entries uh, or edit the entries or edit the documents or uh, uh, extracting reports generally we have table access okay so but uh, we do not have any uh, t code access or display only display access we have in the production system we cannot edit the document we cannot post the document authorization errors will come so that case uh, um, uh, see in in, in uh, see if we, any kind of authorization issues when we will contact to security team only but in production system, nobody will give you access to edit or post the document in real time. OK, except in the month ending uh, time. So they will give you the firefighter access. So in specifically for month ending time. OK, so uh, because uh, in month ending activities will be sometimes will be done by FIC or MM consultant for finance related month ending activities. So in that case, uh, so we need to perform all these uh, test uh, 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 test point of view or real time point of view. So uh, we need to take that uh, different kind of T course which are relevant to month ending and year ending activities. Only that case you will have production access. They will give you uh, only two or three days uh, T code access. Uh, uh, apart from this, there is no access in the uh, production uh, for you in uh, general cases. 
okay but in sandbox you will have complete access and uh, development server and quality server these are all back end servers okay so you must have access for all these servers but in case of production server you have only display access except in the month ending and year ending cases so all times you have only display access but if you need specifically any one t code access uh, to perform this activity in production then you need to raise firefighter id in the production system firefighter id will be there so what is the firefighter id and also once you go to the company then you will come to know so actually we need to raise a firefighter id from the security team so for that point of view you need to follow the process okay so rest of all cases uh, uh, these are all non uh, non uh, uh, what we call uh, background sorry uh, production server non production servers these are all non production servers right sandbox server development server quality server pre production server these are all uh, non production servers only production server is only production server is this one okay so sap end user has access edit post or extract the reports and display the documents so end user doesn't have any access for quality server development servers and there may be chances to get opportunity in the science of sandbox server if they have any proper approvals okay so pre production servers has only leads to those people who want to test out uat so only people get the access remaining rest of the people doesn't have any access uh, in the product pre production server okay so these are the uh, servers are very crucial in the real time so actually so the configuration part will be done in the only development server the configuration entire configuration part will be done in the development server okay so this is all about uh, servers uh, um, that we uh, that we can see in real time so sandbox server has a client okay sandbox server has one client and a development server has one client okay and a development server is also called as a golden client and a quality server has one client okay pre production server has one client and a production server has one client so client is just like a client client means client is just like three digit numeric number numerical number okay client is just like three digit numerical number so three digit numerical number three digit numerical number okay so <coughs> client means a highest organizational unit in sap it is a highest number one place is client okay client server is the number one place so so these are all servers will comes under the client okay sandbox server is at client level and development server is at client level quality server is comes under the client level so every server has a client okay so client is a three digit numerical number okay and uh, so what is the client data what is the client data see so how we can easily identify the uh, sandbox server so based on this client so 1 100 means sandbox server and 110 means Uh, development server 120 means uh, quality server 130 means uh, pre production server uh, production server is 140 so like that uh, so this number may be vary in real time so how we can uh, explain these things i will show you one document right away so you will get some idea one minute one minute please see this is uh, just like uh, servers okay one of the best example that we can see see uh, i already told you so this number should be not same for every company uh, for the client so see this is the 3110 is for sandbox client 320 is the configuration client development and 330 is the development test client this is the one server originally added in this place and 210 is the testing client and 220 is the quality client and 230 is the training client so these uh, uh, these two servers additionally added okay 
so maintaining servers is little bit cost effective to the company so top most companies what generally do they will maintain additional servers for the better quality and better service okay so here i just uh, taking one example so to understand uh, more on the uh, servers so i cannot say only so all the servers will be there in real time so in some cases and i see some of the companies sandbox servers will not be there and uh, uh, training client and quality testing client these two servers uh, are not there okay so some of these uh, like here uh, um, you cannot find any pre production servers right so like that so every server has a client so this is just like identification so which server you are working okay so if any if in real time so we cannot directly say development client so uh, we can say 330 client okay 330 client stands for development testing client right so like that this is just like one identification and uh, all the servers will come under the client level so here uh, 330 is just like development test client right so and 320 is the configuration client 310 is the sandbox client so this should be vary this should be vary this should not be same okay and uh, here client means uh, um, this is the client uh, servers and what is the client data okay so there are three types of uh, uh, client data will be there three types of uh, client data okay. so first one should be uh, master data master data is a client data and the second one is transactional data and third one should be customizing data so these are all client data okay if anyone ask you what is the client data tell me then here uh, some of the uh, data which are completely relevant to client master data transactional data and customizing data so you know very well what is transaction on everyday basis uh, generally there are different kind of transactions will be happen okay so that case uh, there should be uh, these uh, transactional data like uh, purchasing data sales data so whatever the data we have the same should be considered as a transactional data okay so transactional means um, uh, transaction means it's just like which we can express it in terms of money only only uh, which can be expressed in terms of money transaction that we can say it's a transactional right so those data is also called as a client data and customizing means what are the configurations you perform in the development okay so development server so all the customizations with evapors and any enhancements okay so these are all things which comes under the customizing so this data is uh, relevant to client okay so uh, customizing data is a client data and uh, master data means so some of the master data we have okay i will give you that master data list right now gl master data and vendor master data okay customer master data and bank is also master data asset master data and uh, gl master vendor master cash element is also master data material is also master data material master data okay so cost element master data material master data so these are all master data we have okay in sap cost center is also master data profit center is also master data and uh, internal order is also master data okay so these are all master data we have okay master data means gl master data vendor master data customer master data bank master data asset to master data so these are all master data we can say so okay so transaction means we know very well customizing is normal okay see now i will share you one document to you uh, regarding the system landscape okay so uh, you people should understand uh, what exactly the landscape see we have only four sessions so tuesday wednesday thursday friday so next uh, session should be tuesday only tuesday same timing okay so next wednesday thursday and friday so meanwhile you prepare
So the next class should be types of projects in SAP. How many types of projects we have in SAP? So those things will explain. So after that, uh, I will uh, ex explain SAP methodology, then active methodology in S4 HANA, and then we will start the configurations. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, if someone is someone is new in this SAP FICO module, then he have to learn uh, SAP ECC module to understand SAP S4 HANA. So one minute I will tell you. So uh, let me share the document and then I will explain your question. OK. OK. See guys, so your question is just like uh, what is the difference between S4 HANA or FICO or uh, which is best to learn uh, SAP FI or uh, S4 HANA. So what is the question you have right now? Sir, my doubt is that I have to learn ECC to understand S4 HANA. Means S4 HANA mm -hmm. I think is upgraded version of okay. ECC. Yeah, uh, so actually these things we already uh, discussed last classes. See, uh, in order to learn SAP S4 HANA, so first of all, uh, we should have entire knowledge on SAP ECC side. OK, without knowing ECC, we cannot jump to S4 HANA. Right now, I collectively explaining uh, both SAP FIC1 and S4 HANA and uh, the differences also you guys are watching, right? So like that, uh, so I will explain one by one. So at the initial stage, I will cover SAP FIC1 uh, part. Once SAP FIC1 part is ended up, then I will move to S4 HANA. Okay, I cannot directly jump to S4 HANA because S4 HANA is a little bit uh, uh, complex and the terminology should be different. And uh, so if I explain S4 HANA, so then advanced topics I need to explain first. So as the initial stages, as a fresher, so maybe you will face some difficulty to understand the topics. Um, the high level topics will be added to S4 HANA uh, at the initial level also. That is the reason. So first uh, I will focus more on ECC side. Once you get perfection on AC side, then we can move to S4 HANA. But S4 uh, HANA demo already explained you. OK, so just watch out to that uh, video. OK, okay so sir. but uh, coming classes, uh, whatever the uh, configuration level, those things will be explained ECC one at the initial stage. And after that, once you perfect, once you perfect in uh, ECC level, then we can move to S4 HANA. But it's a little bit time taking. So please be patient till then and uh, learn ECC concept. ECC is, ECC is the Bible for S4. Uh, so uh, first focus more should be on ECC. Once you get perfection, then we can switch on to S4. Not, uh, there is no worries. Okay? So, sir, to practice, one should have both ECC and S4 on a system. Yeah, so I will show you both the systems, ECC and S4 HANA. OK. Right. OK, guys, this, this is the end of the session and uh, next time. So we will uh, come up with new topics. So uh, please be uh, wait till Wednesday, Tuesday. So Tuesday we have one more session at uh, the same time uh, at 8 15 PM as usual. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night. Have a great day. Thank you, sir.